after receiving Holy Communion, please stick out your tongue. Okay, stick out your tongue properly and do not bite the fingers of the priest. Yes, it's quite painful, you know. And if you stick out your tongue, then we don't have to touch your tongue. There will be no infection of COVID. In any case, we receive communion here on the tongue as an act of faith that our Lord is more powerful than COVID. And the proof, I'm still here today after a severe COVID. Okay? So, thank you very much for your attention and cooperation. Name the Father, the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear friends, you know, among the Jewish rabbis, there was a common teaching that our Lord Jesus Christ, or God, will only forgive three times. The fourth time, he will not forgive anymore. And so one day, St. Peter asked our Lord, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother? Is it seven times? Well, three compared to seven, St. Peter thought, wow, I'm very generous already. But Jesus answered him, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven times. In other words, every time someone asks you pardon, you must forgive him. Now, dear friends, Today's parable is our Lord's explanation why we must forgive, not seven times, but 70 times seven times. If you listen carefully, if not, you can read it again from our weekly bulletin. There are three main characters of this parable. There was the king, the unforgiven servant, and the other servants. Here the king desired to settle accounts with his servants, but one of them had no means to pay the king. We know that this king represents our Lord Jesus Christ. We say it in the credo, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you remember, was unjustly judged, condemned by wicked men, and fastened to the cross. Now the same Jesus Christ who died will come again to judge all angels and all men. When we look around us, we would be dismayed why? Because in this world, many criminals avoid court trials. Some of them are even trying to become candidates next year's election. In this world, they escape. But would they escape the reckoning of Jesus Christ? I doubt it. In this world, human judges can be bribed. But who can bribe our Lord? In this world, judges can err in their sentences because they do not know all the circumstances of the crime. But our Lord Jesus Christ, He is God, the Almighty, the All-Knowing, the Omniscient. In this world, criminals escape their prisons. Yes, prison break. But who can escape the eternal prison of hell? So, dear friends, we cannot and we must not expect perfect justice in this world. Complete and absolute justice will only be on the next, after our Lord's particular judgment at the hour of our death. And when he promulgates this judgment, in the general judgment of his second coming. Meanwhile, dear friends, let us be ready for his final call. You see, 
Death comes when we least expect it. And we die the way we live. Now this servant who cannot pay, who is he? He represents each and every one of us, including myself. Even if we have not seen our very existence and our life depends on God. And by sinning, we aggravate our deplorable situation. By sinning, we do not only offend God, we also use His very gifts against Him. You've heard there are 10,000 talents, which represents the Ten Commandments. Now, honestly, who among us here have not broken at least one of those Ten Commandments? Children, raise your hands. None. And who among us here is sure enough that he will not break any of them anymore? None. You see? And yet, one mortal sin will make us spiritually bankrupt. Many of us have lost their job because of this COVID. But spiritual bankruptcy is worse. It leads us to hell. And yet, it seems to be very easy to commit sin. So, just like in today's gospel, we must realize that we are helpless sinners. We must realize and be convinced that we are beggars of God's grace. Like the king, God could have taken away from us our loved ones, our parents, your spouses, children, relatives, and friends. God could have withdrawn all his gifts, our talents, our properties, livelihood, and even our health. When I was sick with COVID, I was 38 days in the oxygen. And one oxygen tank is 1,100 pesos times 38. You know how much. Have you thanked God of the free oxygen you are breathing now? We owe everything from God. And He spared us many times until now. The question is, Shall we continue sinning because God is patient and merciful? No. Far be it from us to abuse the divine kindness. He had remitted us so much already. Consequently, the least thing we can do is to become easy creditors, just like him to be broad in our forgiveness. Because to forgive is to imitate God, but not to forgive is to imitate and follow the devil. If there is a person who got perfect hatred, his name is Lucifer. So, what did this insoluble servant do? He knelt down and entreated the king, Have patience with me and I will pay thee all. There at the back, we also kneel down. We kneel down at the back to the minister of God, to the priest at the confessional. Our Lord Jesus Christ has two tribunals. The tribunal of justice, and that is at our own deathbed, and the tribunal of mercy, and that is the confessional. As we all know, there are many roads, there are many doors that lead to hell. But in hell, there is only one fire exit, and it's called the confession box. 
Now, how do we avail of our Lord's tribunal of mercy? Do we use it regularly or do we abuse it? You see, when we are tempted, we must not tell ourselves, oh, I'm old enough, I'm an adult now, and I can still sin. Anyway, there will always be a priest at OLBC to hear my confession. No, accidents can happen and accidents do happen. People died in their sleep. People die on the roads. And if you come to think of it, how many of those who died of COVID would have wanted to confess to a priest? But the hospitals and the ungodly governments of the world will not allow them. And so, having detested all our sins, not just some of them, all our sins, let us confess them as soon as possible, before death overtakes us. Moreover, having obtained God's forgiveness, we have the grave obligation to be patient and merciful to others, just as God has been patient and merciful to us. For his part, our Lord forgives and forgets everything all at once. But for us, we cannot forgive immediately. We cannot forget immediately. So from this Mass, let us make the resolution to be easy in our forgiving although it is very difficult in forgetting. To forgive does not necessarily require that you should kiss mm, your enemy. No. It's just you want for him the salvation of his soul. If your enemy, after greeting him, will not mind you, your obligation is finished. Okay? Okay to forgive, even if it's difficult to forget. Unfortunately, when this forgiven servant was outside the palace, he met one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 denarii, which is the equivalent of a million talents. So one talent is about a million denarii. And he took this servant, laid hold of him, throttled him, and said, Pay what thou owest. What a terrible contrast. He was forgiven 10,000 talents, but he is unwilling to pay a hundred denarii. The proportion is one to a million. And yet, he would not listen to the entreaties of his fellow servant. Instead, he put him into prison. But then, the other servants were sudden. They were shocked. So they reported him to their king. In like manner, we cannot be indifferent to the evil things that are happening around us today. To be indifferent to the evil things around us today, you know what is that? It's a spiritual AIDS. Yes, AIDS. A, acquired. I, insensitivity. D, due to S, selfishness. Spiritual AIDS. To be indifferent of the sufferings of others. So, we need to report evil things to our superiors, okay? But for the sake of charity, for fraternal correction, to save the soul of that erring person. Yes, we don't just make a report, you know, to bring down that person. No, in charity, in fraternal correction. 
Unfortunately, most of the time, when we make reports, it's out of jealousy, of envy, of hidden ambition. We want to be seen as better. And once we are better, we can climb up the corporate ladder. We'll have a position. I'm the boss now. Alas, this sad situation of a crab mentality is not only in secular societies, it is even in priestly and religious organizations. See, we must think twice and pray harder before making any verbal or written reports. Because if you point the finger to another person, remember that one finger goes to that person, but the three goes back to you. And our Lord said, with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And in what measure you meet, you shall be measured. Now the result is inevitable. The king got very angry and threw this unforgiven servant to be tortured until he paid all his debts. At the confessional, the priest's absolution, God gives, forgives us all the eternal punishment due to our sins. Once we receive absolution, we are not sure we will not go to hell. But the Lord does not necessarily remit all the temporal punishments due to those sins are forgiven. The remission of this temporal punishment depends on the perfection of our contrition. A perfect contrition means the motive why I am sorry is because I love God. God is my father and I don't want to offend him. That is perfect contrition. And perfect contrition erases everything all at once. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to make a perfect act of contrition. And so there is the imperfect contrition. Our motive may be the fear of death, the shame, or most of all, the fear of going to hell. That's imperfect contrition, which is called attrition. Attrition only remits a part of the temporal punishment. So, if we have not completed our reparation on her on earth, by accepting the problems, sufferings, trials, and, and difficulties of life, then we will have to complete our atonement by the purifying fires of purgatory. And that is why, dear friends, we must not neglect holy indulgences. Through the indulgences, the church applies to us and to the souls in purgatory, the spiritual treasure, the merits of all the angels and the saints. When you open your prayer book, you will have their indulgence prayer 50 days. Meaning, if there is a saint who have fasted on bread and water alone for 50 days, his merit is applied to you as if you are the one fasting on bread and water for 50 days. That's an indulgence. For example, Our Lady of Victory's Church, it is a consecrated church. See there in the pillars, the consecration candles. When you enter and pray here, you will have a 50 days partial indulgence. If, of course, you are in the state of grace without any attachment even to venial sin. See, by the indulgences, okay, the church applies to us the merits of the saints. A plenary indulgence remits all punishment. A partial indulgence remits a part of them. The more we gain these indulgences, the lesser will be our stay in purgatory. In any case, 
To err is human, but to forgive is divine. Still, if we have to err, let it be on the side of mercy, not a harsh, punctilious, inconsiderate, heartless justice. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ is the King who will demand a rigorous account from us at the moment of our death. And whatever sentence he said there, he will publish it to the whole world at his second coming. We are unprofitable servants. We are insoluble servants. We cannot pay all our debts to our Lord. And so let us not be heartless in our judgment. Let us not be hasty in reporting the mistakes of others. Our Lord said that. Before you take out the mote of another eye, take out the beam out of your own eye. Let us correct ourselves first and then be prompt, be generous in forgiving. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. May Our Lady of Mercy and Saint Joseph, patron of a holy death, obtain for us perfect contrition and final perseverance. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Amen.